Circuit breakers are devices that allows us to isolate parts of the system at will. It can be while measuring a variable like current or voltage or power, or just after a manual event. These circuit breakers are represented as squares around the, the circuit model. To operate, in, to operate these uh, circuit breakers, you can just click on them and they will change color, indicating if they are open or closed. The color to indicate if they are open or closed can be changed through the configuration menu. So by default, these colors are red to indicate that the circuit breaker is closed, or green to indicate that the circuit breaker is open. But the user can change them, can, can change those colors at any time. Then we can change the topology of the system isolate elements, isolate sections, uh, depending on what we want to do. Right now, what I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the real-time simulation module, and I'm going to show the isolation heat map to show how this affects the model while the simulation is running. So by clicking on the switch, I'll be opening and closing those switches. You can see that immediately the section that's after the switch will be isolated and reconnect just by clicking on the switch on the circuit breaker we're going to see the change we're going to make see it operate another way to operate circuit breakers is using the switch panel just by double clicking the name of the switch in this panel we're going to change the state of the of the of the switch of the circuit breaker we can also locate the circuit breaker on the model because sometimes we have a very a large scale circuit and it's difficult to make click on the GUI. So what we can do is just locate it and do it and change the state of the circuit breaker through the circuit through the switch panel. We can we have on other options like for example operating all the switches at once, opening all the switches at once, etc. Circuit breakers of different kinds can be created in OpenBSSG using graphical menus. In this case, we're going to create a recloser to connect a section that can be separate with a different switch. So for that, we're going to go ahead and select recloser from PD elements. There, the first step is going to be to name our recloser. We're going to set a name. Just remember not to put special characters on the name of the recloser. Then we're going to select the PCC curves for the recloser. After that, we're going to apply a little multiplier so the recloser doesn't give us too much trouble during simulation. Basically, what we want here is uh, to keep the recloser closed and operate it manually. Now we're going to select the connection buses. We're going to connect the recloser in between buses 64 and 108. So you can see them there. You can select after double clicking on one of the buses for the recloser, this menu is going to appear. And you can select the bus and even see where the bus is if you're not sure about it. Then select the way that terminal of the recloser is going to be connected to the bus. And the same for 108. So we have it here. We're going to click on search. And we got it. So we're going to confirm and just connect it. After clicking and create, OpenDSSG is going to draw the recloser in the location given. There it is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to simulation mode. We're going to hide the names by just clicking on show element, na element names. And we can see that the recloser can be open and closed just by clicking on it. We're going to go with the real time module. And we're going to highlight, we're going to use the isolation heat map just to see what's going on and to verify that re the recloser is working properly. So first I'm gonna isolate the section and then using my new recloser, I'm gonna restore service there. We can see that the isolated section gets reconnected once the, the proper combination of switches is done. Non-visible circuit breakers 
are controllers linked to elements that not necessarily are switches like lines or transformers. Those are very common in, when working with OpenDSS and they can be created also in OpenDSSG. To do that, you just have to select the type of controller that you want to link and the place where you're going to put it. For example, in this case, we're going to select a switch control. The first step will be to just name it or you can leave the default name. It all depends on what you need or what you want to do. Then we're going to select the element to which the controller is linked. In this case, it's a line. It's going to be line 55, L55. And we can leave all the other parameters by default. So we just create it. And if we go to edit, to the edit window for the switch we just created, you're going to see that it has inherited all the features of the uh, switch object. So now we go to uh, the simulation mode. We can see everything is working fine. And now we're going to see the isolation heat map. We can see everything looks great interconnected, but we cannot see our new switch control. So the only way to see it because it's invisible will be the switch panel. There, we can see the name of the new switch control we have created. We can locate the switch control within the GUI. And now we can also operate it manually if needed. To do that, to show how it works, we're going to use the real-time simulation module. We're going to show the uh, isolation graph while we're doing the simulation. So by double-clicking on the name of the new switch, we can see it opens the entire section of the feeder. We can close it, open it, and we can see that all the other controls are also operating. So we can try it over and over again. We're going to try to open, close, just to verify that everything is working correctly. And in this test, it seems to be working fine. Voltage control relays are some of the applications that can be implemented using the circuit breaker controls that we have in OpenDSSG. The first step in this example is going to be to highlight what we have on the feeder to see what we can expect. So we can see the substation, we can see that we have cap banks at the end of the feeder, and also we have four regulators as shown on the screen. What uh, this makes us think is that probably we're going to have high voltage, high voltages or higher voltages at the end of the feeder because of the cap banks. Of course, the regulator should take those voltages to an unacceptable range. But in this case, what we want to do is we, wanna, we want to open line 73 when the voltages overpass, exceed a limit amount. The first step to see how the situation is, is to put a monitor. We're going to put a monitor uh, upstream the line, line 73, just to see how voltages are behaving. And with that information, we're going to make a, a choice here. We're going to... So to do that measuring, we're going to place a standard monitor. We're going to go for a daily simulation. We're going to increase a little bit the some iterations just in case. And we're ready to go. So we went for a daily simulation. We're going to see how the voltage looks in that point in time. And to see it better, see it clearer, we're going to export those voltages, those record, records, the recording to OpenDSS Viewer. So now we have those voltages in DSS Viewer. Right now we have all the different quantities that were measured by the monitor. We're just going to bring voltages. As we can see, yes, the voltage is a little bit high, but the regulator does a good job and takes the voltage down. So now our mission to take those voltages to a higher level during a short period of time is to include a PV system. To do that, we're going to include a large PV system. So we're going to put the PV system upstream, line 73, 
And let's say we're gonna use a two megawatt PV system. That should do the work, the job. And this is the iRadiance profile we have. So we're gonna go full active power. And the location, as I said before, is gonna be upstream line, line 73. So this will be the location that we're gonna have. So let's remove the line names. You can see the, the bus names. There, there's where we're gonna we're gonna connect our PV system. It's gonna be Y connected, just for this example. With that, we are ready to go. So we're gonna clear the monitors. We're gonna show where our PV system is located. There it is, you can see it in red. And we're gonna run the daily simulation again. We're gonna take the time meters, well, the simulation time to zero. We run the simulation and we're gonna see the difference between the previous and the new model. In the new one, we have a PV system that we didn't have in the past. So as we can see, we're gonna synchronize our measurements. We're gonna see them the same scale. And let's synchronize the cursors. So here we are. We're gonna have the same scale. Let's make sure we are seeing things in the same perspective. And here we are. So let's coordinate those cursors. Here we are. So yes, we have a little spike of voltage thanks to the PV system. And we're gonna use it to open line 73 when we reach that voltage level. So that's going to be our goal. The next step will be to see the names of the lines so we can link a relay at the location we are interested in. Right now we have the destination which is line 73. We're going to create a new relay. The relay, first we define the name of the relay, then the relay type, which is gonna be a voltage control. Then we're gonna look, we're gonna link the control curves for under voltage and over voltages. Those are provided by default with OpenDSSG and OpenDSS. After that, we're gonna link the element that we want to monitor and the element that we want to we want to switch, which is the same line 73, L73. And also we have to define the KB base to make a trip. We're gonna make a definition for the KB base a bit lower for the circuit, so we can trip it when the small over voltage appears during the simulation. So we're gonna set the, the set point at 3.93 KB. With that, the relay is ready, so the next step will be to go for simulation and see how it works. It's not visible, so the only way to interact manually with that relay will be by using the switch panel. We're gonna put it here. Also, we're gonna set the simulation to run it with the real-time module. We're gonna set step times of one hour. We're gonna see the voltages in real time with the monitor we set in the earlier stages, so we're gonna see it live. And now we're gonna start the real-time simulation module, indicating the isolation heat map. With that, we should be ready to go. So now the simulation is happening. We can see the first trip. We've reached the voltage limit that we had. Once the voltage goes down, we can easily restore 
that segment of the feeder using the switch panel just by double clicking on the relay name and then when the voltage gets to the value to the limit value we have defined there you go the relay is going to trip again In this example, we're going to create a recloser so we can visualize the tripping actions by the recloser, which is an interesting exercise. The first step will be to create a bus because we're going to intervene the line and put a recloser in between. The line we're going to intervene is line 55. We've played with that line before in this, in this video. So we're going to select the line. We're going to use the reconnecting tool to do that, we're just going to move it from its original location to the new bus we have, reconnecting. We're going to relocate the bus just to make it match with the topology we have. And here we are. So now we're going to place the recloser in between the recloser bus and bus 54. To do that, we're going to open the recloser menu. Again, just give it a name. Select the TCC curves. In this case, it's just one of the defaults, the T-Link control curve. Uh, we're gonna set some big multipliers. So they're gonna, the, the, the recloser is only gonna respond to a very high current, which is gonna be introduced by adding a fault to the simulation. So we're gonna find the multiplier for both control curves that we have defined before. And finally, we're gonna define the connection buses for the recloser. In this case, the first one is gonna be bus 54, as we defined previously. So you can see here, bus 54, just select it, define the connection multiple bus, and the other one is gonna be the recloser bus. It's the only one in the model, so it's going to be easy to find. We create the recloser, and here we are. Now we're going to go to the simulation mode. We're going to remove some names so we can see it clear. You can see that the, the recloser is already included and is visible, so we can operate it on the GUI or through the switch panel. You can see it is connected and. After running simulation, it may we can verify that it's working properly. So now we are going to add a monitor downstream the recloser just to monitor the tripping actions. Let's put it on line 58, which is downstream line 55. And we're going to record voltages, currents, powers, everything. So here we're just defining the monitor. And we're going to show the voltages in time just to see how it works. For the simulation, we're going to go to time simulation mode, so time, and the time step for the simulation is going to be half a second because we want to see the tripping. So it's going to be 500 milliseconds. We're going to run this example using the real time simulation module, but it can be run offline as well. I mean. You don't have to see it live. You can just capture the, the results with the monitors. So here, everything looks to be running fine. We're showing the isolation heat map while the simulation is running, and we're gonna introduce a three phase to ground fault. Here is where the, uh, the fault is gonna be introduced, and we can see. So the recloser is stripping. It's trying to reclose several times. 
and we can see the data in the monitor and also graphically to the degree. So with the default menu, we can see where the fault was located, clear the fault, and also with the menu at the monitor, we can export the results so we can see what the trip looked like in terms of current, voltage. The current was symmetrical, it was three phase, it was very good, and voltage looks kind of the same, a little bit of difference because of the unbalance, but it's fine. So we can see on the screen where the fault happened and we can clear it. So now we're going to restore the service. Everything is looking great again. And now let's try something different. What if we want to go with a single face to ground fault? So we're going to add that single face to ground fault. Let's put it in phase two. And again, the very closer trips. And we can see that the magnitudes per phase in terms of voltage and currents change because of the type of fault, which is interesting when we're registering that using the monitor, which is the interesting part here. In fact, we can stop the simulation, export everything again, and see it. We're going to see the, the differences in terms of voltage, current, everything. So per phase, we'll see that yeah, they change depending on the phase. Change colors just to make it more visible. And of course, in terms of current, the faulted phase is going to have the, higher, the highest current. We can see the faults also in terms of phasers using monitors. So again, let's try to, to generate a fault, a single phase fault. We're going to bring the system to normal, back to normal here. Because the fault is not cleared, the system is going to trip again, and we can see how it behaves in terms of phasers. We can have a lot of uh, different information uh, with the monitors. We can report that, register it, export, save it, etc. <laughs>